Terra Collab time with Dendrobium Tortile. Thank you for clicking on this video and deciding to come and have a look, see what this is all about. Dendrobium Tortile or the Twisted Orchid. Tortile meaning twisted in Latin. Very, very clear where they got that one from. With these beautiful twisted petals and sepals on the blooms. My care collab today is together with Fernanda Nacimento, Orchids and Succulents. I am very happy to have this orchid in bloom in time for our care collab. But let me step back a little bit with the camera so that you can see the full extent and then we'll get back to the blooms a little bit later. Thank you for joining me, Fernanda Nacimiento Orchids and Succulents, very much on this care collab. I am here in southern Spain, so I look forward to seeing what your tortilla is doing in Portugal. Now, mine I've had since 2018, and this is a rare orchid, for me at least, not rare on the market, they're easy to find. For me she's rare because she came from Schwerter. If you know my odyssey with orchids from Schwerter, that's why I'm calling her rare. She came as a healthy specimen-sized plant, exactly what I paid for, and she never looked back no matter what I did to her. She went straight on a mount and everything was great and she bloomed for me within the first season that she was with me. Granted, those blooms I can't take credit for because Dendrobium tortile will bloom off growths from the previous two years. So the canes that you're seeing in bloom here right now were the ones I grew in 2019. The canes that are green and leafy and beautiful up there, long, sticking out, including some short ones, but the main canes were the first flush of growth of 2020. These will bloom next year. So there's a two-year cycle from a blooming on the canes of Ortortile, making her quite unique, I would say, especially if you are growing a seedling, that you don't have to be able to think that next year or the following year you will get blooms It'll take quite some time simply because of that bloom cycle. 2019 canes, 2020 canes. And she is vigorous. I am telling you, I am so pleased with this orchid. She is so vigorous that the growth of last year, the long canes, were relatively quickly followed again by another flush of smaller canes that didn't mature to size, but my goodness, if you have the right climate and temperatures, this orchid will just grow and grow and grow and become massive. My maximum length canes are about 50 centimeters. Unfortunately, mine got blown over by a storm during the winter of 20 to 21. So I had to cut off some of the canes at the top here, protect them from rot because they were smushed. However, this orchid has never skipped a beat. The one time, that I saw her starting to languish is not her fault, but that is because of my climate. I mounted her straight away and she did great on a mount. Lots and lots of water. Everything was growing great in 2019. And she got so big that I couldn't keep up with her needs anymore, which brings me to the humidity factor that this orchid requires in order to be happy. The higher the temperatures go in summer during her growing season, the higher the humidity has to be with plenty of airflow. I can provide her in her growing season in the summer with a lot of heat and plenty of airflow, but I have no humidity. So as she was growing in 2019, she threw out eight new growths. I thought I was going to be in trouble come 2020 because when she starts growing, it is go time. It is time to pump in that fertilizer and get those canes as long, as big, as healthy as possible. On a mount in southern Spain, with very hot winds and low humidity, it was just a question of time as to when I had to change her setup. Thankfully, I had Fernando who wanted half of her. So I split her in 2020 and put her in a pot right when the roots were growing. No matter what time of year it was, when the roots started to grow, it was time to split her. So you can see 
This is half of what she would have actually have been by now. That is how vigorous this orchid is. And I think that it is a great, great addition to any collection if you have the space. Because eight growths is something. As she gets bigger and bigger, the growths will increase in numbers as well every single year. We'll go in and you'll see she's already kickstarting her first growths. <laughs> I love this orchid. I think it's absolutely great. If you don't have the space, but your temperatures in winter don't go below five degrees Celsius, then you can grow her outdoors all year round. And that is why I'm so lucky at this point that I can still have and accommodate this orchid because she does live outside all year round. She has her designated space in my blooming alley, whether she's in bloom or not. She's on the top rack of a little decorative stand and that is her space. She faces south. The light source you can see is coming clearly from this angle. That is the wall. And I'll show you a picture. But the light source is coming from right here because I want the growth to spill over in one direction. If she starts to become pendant all around the pot, then I do have space issues. So what I'm trying to do and what was working while she was on the mount, she just grew straight into the blooming alley towards the light source, no problem. Having her potted up, now it's the challenge to make sure that any new growth will start to grow in this direction. And for that reason, I do not move her from her location on that little stand in the corner. And I am fortunate again, because she can live outdoors all year round. So my winters do go down to five degrees Celsius. The books say that she can take 10, 11 degrees. Well, she can take lower than that. And she is in a self-watering with Lekka setup now. She is very, very well rooted in because when she got knocked off the table while I was trying to give her a good shower in the rain during the winter of 20, I could see that the roots were okay. I just had to reposition her, tie her up and fill around with Lekka again. She is actively growing starting now. The blooms are just an indicator of her cycle starting, but her active growth has begun. So we'll go in a little bit closer and I'll show you around this bush of an orchid. Now the orchid can also grow upright. From now on, I could actually put stakes in and make sure that all the canes grow upright. The length of her canes, however, I don't want to do that and I love watching dendrobiums grow pendant. It was such a bummer for me to have to take her off the mount because I do absolutely love the shape and the form when they just fall over and become this beautiful pendant bush and then eventually blooms show up in the leaves. But again, for the health of the orchid, this is the setup that she is in now and she didn't miss a beat either. There was no problems with the roots adaptation. Yes, I had new roots growing, but the old roots didn't die off either. I am super pleased that this has worked. She went through a lot in 2020, and I'm super pleased that I have blooms, but you can see I've already got one new growth starting right there. There's another one starting right there, and those are the first two that I've seen so far. There will be more, and these are the stunted little second growth flush of the year 20 after the first ones had already matured. I fertilize her at 300 parts per million now. It's go time. 300 parts per million. Every single time that reservoir is empty, I flush out twice with the mask as my measure with plain RO water. And then I fill up again with 300 parts per million. In winter, I don't do that. I have always got a little bit of water in the reservoir because I don't want my microfiber to dry out, but I definitely do not fill up the reservoir with water the way I am doing now. It's only a smidgen. It's only to keep that microfiber wet so that my leka doesn't dry out and desiccate any of the roots. Look at this beautiful, beautiful sight. I am so distracted gathering my thoughts here because these blooms for me are just the epitome of elegance and beauty very, very similar to a film. That's why I have them both. And very surprising that this year, my film is not even yet in bloom and my tortile is. 
but the blooms on Tortilla will last me much longer than the Ophyllum blooms will last. So I am still anticipating the time that I have them next to each other in bloom. And it is a gorgeous sight. It is. Both of them complement each other so very well. Same kind of tubular lip. The only difference being all this wacky, funky, twisted of the petals and sepals. They actually originate in a stretch of land naturally from Bangladesh through Southeast Asia to Vietnam at elevations of 1,220 meters. And that also includes the state of Assam in India and the Adaman Islands in the Bay of Bengal. Widely distributed, Thailand would also have some as long as there's the elevation and that is where the temperatures do come in. How about a little bit of fragrance to add to the mix? This orchid throws it at you from all directions. Not only is it abundant in growth, vigorous, and can tolerate very low temperatures in winter, high temperatures in summer, I have to say that the fragrance here is now manifesting itself into something akin to a ginger candy. Very spicy, but it's a ginger kind of fragrance. It is not very obvious, that's for sure, but it is there. Last year, I couldn't quite identify it. It wasn't that obvious to my nose, but this year, as she is getting more mature and older, the ginger wafts are coming through and they are divine. Also, never mind that, there's more. This orchid is so giving. It will produce keikis, but not as a sign of stress, not necessarily. Some dendrobiums, when they're totally stressed out, they'll throw out a keiki, maybe two, maybe eight. <laughs> and not bloom. But this one does it just because that's what it does. It's part of its characteristics. It will produce keikis and they can then be propagated and mounted to begin with and then given away. But I have to say, all things wrapped up and packaged up, I'm absolutely in awe and very, very pleased. Consider myself super lucky to be able to grow her. Having the space, having her potted, and being able to leave her outside all year round. Now there's only two of us here in the Care Collab. So I'm going to reach out and ask anybody who has Dendrobium tortile, and if you make videos and you upload to any social platform at all, please do get in touch by email or leave me a comment below. Let me know that you have her I would love to add you to the list of the Care Collab for Dendrobium Tortilla because of the updates that we're going to be posting in future. Because once she gets going, it'll be exciting to see who's is doing what and how quickly. <laughs> so yeah, please feel free to make a point of that in the comments or send me an email, which is in my description of this video. And now I would like to just say, let's stare at some blooms. I think that has covered everything there is to say for the easy, in my opinion, forgiving care of this orchid, considering I have no humidity. My setup is counteracting that deficiency and she is just going crazy. And this year I get to leave her alone and she can just grow and double in size once again. Thank you ever, ever so much for watching. I mean, look, seriously, look at that with the sun right there. How, how can you just not? I don't know. I think she's gorgeous, even the pink spikes. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna love and leave you. Thank you so very, very much for watching. So appreciate your time. I hope you have a wonderful day, everybody. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.